Hello, everyone. Welcome to BC Bulletin's Film Study. I'm your host, staff writer Mitchell Wolf. In this video, we'll be breaking down Boston College's quarterback, Phil Jerkovich, from a scouting and NFL draft perspective. I have the honor, nay, the privilege to be joined by the host of the QB Factory podcast for Bleeding Green Nation, writer for Touchdown Wire by USA Today, and the author of 17 Drives, Mark Schofield. Mark, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well, Mitchell. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, although it's my honor to be here, my privilege to be here. I'm excited to dive into the film we're going to watch tonight. Really excited about this player as a prospect, as both a college quarterback and potentially an NFL prospect. And he was somebody I enjoyed studying this summer, so I'm excited to watch this game with you. Right. So your your quick breakdown made me think of this idea. Um, and then also you and I are both alumni of the Scouting Academy, which is a great resource if you want to learn more about how to watch and scout football. And that's where I got this idea to do this joint film study. Um, so if you're a BC fan, you probably already know a lot about Phil Dracovic. But if you don't, he's a 6'5", 226 pound quarterback. He originally played for Notre Dame, but transferred to BC last year. And he'll be a redshirt junior this year. So, Mark, when you're scouting quarterbacks, what are three of the most important traits you're looking for? Well, I mean, there, there are two that are very important that you can see on film, and there's a third that, what, that you are looking for, but it's a little bit tougher to find. The first two, decision-making and ball placement. I mean, I, I think those are two things that are critical, that are sort of must-have, non-negotiable traits for a quarterback to succeed at the college level, to succeed at the NFL level. And there are ways to go about that. We'll talk about some of it, I'm sure. You know, But what I always try to do is get myself into that quarterback's mind as much as I can on a given play. So a lot of my notes, a lot of my study, a lot of my note-taking starts before the ball is even snapped. What is he seeing? What is he expecting? What is the defense showing him? What is the defense perhaps not showing him? And try to get myself into a frame of mind to sort of set my expectations for what he should or perhaps should not do on that play. And then evaluate what he goes ahead and does. You know, And then accuracy, ball placement, like that's something that is again, I think, a non-negotiable for young quarterbacks now as they transition from the college game to the pro level. Like, if you can't put the football where it needs to be, when it needs to be there, like, there's going to be a problem. You have to fix that. That's sort of a non-negotiable trait. The third that I think is critical, and this is something that I've sort of refined myself in doing this over the years, is competitive toughness. You know, quarterback is a leadership position. Quarterback is a you know, follow me into the depths of hell kind of position. You know, you have to be able to walk into the huddle. And this is something I know from personal experience and have 10 sets of eyes looking back at you, because if those 10 sets of eyes are looking down, looking around, looking for a friend in the crowd, looking for their parents in the crowd, they don't respect you. They don't believe in you. They're not going to be the best they can be. It's your job as a quarterback to pull that out of them. And so you can see it sometimes like uh, an example I bring up all the time, Mitchell, um, you know, you look at Dak Prescott and Dak Prescott was somebody I wildly missed on. I wasn't a huge fan of Dak's coming out of Mississippi state, but you watch his game his senior year against Alabama. When he went down fighting, they were losing. He was still battling until the fourth quarter battle until the final play. Like that's the reason why I give competitive toughness such weight now is because the reason why I missed on Dak, I didn't weigh that enough in my final evaluation of him. And now I weigh it a whole lot more. So now when I see players like, you know, Joe Burrow, you know, mm -hmm. doing the things that he's done over the past couple of years, when I see, you know, even a player that this past draft cycle, like, you know, Mac Jones, get smacked, get up, make another throw. He had one on uh, a crossing route to, for a touchdown to Jalen Waddle against Missouri, where Nick Bolton absolutely just, unloaded on him he had like an eight yard run and head start into him if you're alabama's if you're you know jalen waddle if you're devonta smith if you're Najee harris you see your quarterback do that you want to go make a play for him and so competitive toughness is that third thing it's a little bit harder to pick up on film sometimes it's easier to talk to players talk to teammates talk to coaches about it but there are moments when you can see it on film yeah that's awesome stuff and i think those are three things we'll definitely be looking for in this film cut up. So this game, we're going to be watching BC's game against Pittsburgh from last season, which was a 31 to 30 overtime victory. Uh, first, I want to shout out Caddy's Cutups for making this video. They're an excellent resource for college all 22 film, and there'll be a link to their Patreon in the description below. Uh, in this game, Jerkovich completed 19 of his 35 attempts for 358 yards with three touchdowns and one, three passing touchdowns and one rushing touchdown. Uh, so we're going to get into the film now. So we'll pull that up. So we'll get started. So we have the, this is a BC's first offensive drive. Uh, so Pitt has already had the ball. This is BC starting at their own five in the shadow of their own goal line. And we're going to get a quick little RPO to tight end Hunter Long, who had a really impressive season last year uh, for BC. 
Yeah, and I mean, there's not a ton, Mitchell, on this play from a mm-hmm. quarterback's perspective. Um, nice little drive starter type of play, but w- w- you look at the ball mechanics and the, the mechanism of this throw. High snap, you got to pull it down to make the fake and get it out quickly. I mean, it's it's a little harder than it looks, um, but he executes this design well. Yeah, I like what you said. Like easy drive starter. Like you got get the quarterback's confidence up with a pretty easy completion. Got to get it over the leaping defender in that last rep, but still good to see. So we got empty here. This, Quick little. This- Go ahead. Yeah, this design I really like because it's stick concept to the three receiver side. And you see pre-snap. Again, I talked earlier about you want to get in your mind frame of that quarterback. That number two receiver, the middle receiver to that trips, he's uncovered. See right there? Mm-hmm. He's kind of uncovered. That guy's playing with inside leverage over number two. So pre-snap, he might be thinking, look, I can hit this outside stick because that guy's going to be playing with inside leverage. That's a nice, easy throw. But then that guy sort of jumps to, so he immediately has to sort of recalibrate, come inside and throw that. It's a quick little read. It's not the most complex thing that he does in this game, let alone last season. But it's a good sort of pre-snap versus post-snap. What do you see pre-snap? How do you then adjust your expectations post-snap? And I think you see that in, so he gets the ball and there's that second where he holds the ball. Got to go back inside and find Zay Flowers for a nice little gain. So now we've got third down. Uh, so we're in gun. We've got double wing. BC likes this formation a lot, this condensed formation with two tight ends. So we're going to release both. We've got, I mean, <laughs> not the best throw, but, you know, no, not the best throw, but it's, a good, it's a good read. And, you know, this is sort of a mirrored flat seven smash, right? So you've got the same concept to both sides. Receivers to the flat, receivers on the deep sort of corner slash out route. He likes the matchup. This is sometimes – a route concept you would term, you know, best read, best look, because it's a mirrored concept, same to both sides. He likes the fact that he can throw that to the field, has the receiver has more space to work with because you see right hash mark. You try to make that throw to the right sideline, condensed formation. Because you see how there, he immediately decides pre-snap. Okay, based on this coverage, based on ball placement, hash mark, I'm going to the field side here. His receiver makes a great adjustment on it, but I like the read. Yeah. I like the read. And I think if I remember correctly, the corner is Marquise Williams, who's 5'9", and the receiver is C.J. Lewis, who's 6'3". So yeah. that's a matchup you're taking every yeah. time. And and that gets sort of to the like pre-snap decision-making process. Best matchup, best side, you're going to take that throw. Exactly. All right, so now we're in the, high, I guess, the high red zone. Got a bunch to the field. Makes a nice move, escapes the pocket. That's so, a really nice play. Yeah, so uh, a lot of people have kind of comped in, you know, and obviously pro comps are a bit dangerous, but there's been this early comparison between Phil Phil Djokovic and Ben Roethlisberger. And um, personally, I'm a Steelers fan. So a play like this, definitely you see that reminiscence of just kind of getting outside the pocket and finding a receiver, a bit of a risky throw, but still, you know, creating when things, when the first read isn't really there. Yeah. And I think the more important thing to see on this play is that pocket feel, that sort of sixth sense, the eyes in the back of your head, you see it here. He's going to get, you know, that rush off the edge and he dips around underneath it and doesn't give those guys a a chance to get a clean hit on him. That sort of pocket feel is critical for a young quarterback's development. Right. And, you know, BC offensive line early in the season because of some position changes, they had some struggles, but this year everybody's kind of moving back to their more natural positions. So, you know, ideally they should be playing a good bit better this season. All right. So now we're down in the low red zone, third down again. Got a motion to create a bunch on the field side. Got another roll or scramble drill and flings it back across his body. There are a couple of things that I don't like about this play. The first thing is the decision to bail. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's a great book, Eyes Up by Terry Shea, longtime, you know, NFL and college quarterback coach, offensive coordinator, coach, guys like Trent Green, guys like Matthew Stafford, you know. He wrote in that book, your first steps as a quarterback in the pocket should be towards the line of scrimmage, not away from the line of scrimmage. You see here, there's an opportunity for him to climb the pocket right there and step up into the pocket. Mm -hmm. And instead he dips around to the outside. All that does is put your right tackle on an island. Yeah. You know, all that does is put your right tackle on. He can't, he can't block the guy from both sides. He's just one human being. And so you've now invited pressure. And then of course, look, the cardinal rule of quarterback in, Never throw late deep over the middle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I understand it's you know third down and goal. I understand this is open. You know, I would be saying this if this hit for a touchdown. I would be saying the same two things because it's important to keep in mind 
the idea of process versus results. So say he does this and it hits for a touchdown. Okay, that's great against Pittsburgh on a Saturday afternoon. You know, uh, is it going to work on Sunday? Yeah, it but- might work in, at the Heights. It's mm-hmm. not going to work on Sundays. Yeah, for sure. And I think we see that. You know, I think part of you know. Sorry, going back here. Um, so I th- it looks like they're kind of running some kind of spacing spot concept here, or snag, depending on what you want to call it. Um, but nobody's really open. So, and then, like you said, the pressure really forces him outside the pocket and forces this not ideal throw, if you right. want to word it that way. Yeah. So. And, and, you know, these, these, I always tell people these will sound nitpicky. You might be watching this as a BC Eagles fan. And, hey, you're probably hearing the Boston accent. So, hey, you know, hello. Yeah, well, nice well, the mass in the building. <laughs> yeah. But you also might be saying, this is really nitpicky stuff. That's the point. Like yeah. if you want him to take BC to where you want BC to be, if you'd like to see him drafted in the first round of the NFL draft, these mm-hmm. nitpicky things are the difference between, you know, an undefeated season and going seven and four. They're the yeah. difference between first round, third round. Like those are the nitpicky things we focus on. Exactly. All right. So if I'm this should just be a little bit of QB power with the jet sweep. So not something that uh, BC is going to do a ton of, but I, I did advocate that maybe they get him involved with running game a little more, but maybe not necessarily with a QB power this season. Yeah. So, you know, this might not be the best rep. So, you know, not much you can do there. The guard doesn't really get the block. So, you know, we'll kind of move yeah, past but, that one. But it's, it's, you know, you show them the look. I mean, mm-hmm. it's something else. I'm always a fan of giving opposing defensive coordinators one more thing to worry about in the week leading up to the game. So, yeah. There's something to be said for that. Mm-hmm. All right, so we'll come back. We've got another condensed formation. BC uh, installed a lot of these this season with the Frank Signetti Jr. coming in to be the new offensive coordinator. So just th- so this is another thing that I've seen a lot in my film today. There are times where he'll, he will just short arm some of these short, easy throws. Yeah. And I'm wondering if you could kind of explain maybe why that's happening. I mean, it's it's you're artificially speeding yourself up. You okay. know, that's what it is. As a quarterback, you think, man, I got to get this out quickly. You know, it's a third down situation. I get this coverage. I got to hit this to move the sticks to keep the drive alive. So I'm just going to get this out of my hands as quickly as possible, whether it's, you know, drilling it in there with velocity, like we've seen Trey Lance do, whether it's sort of short arming this because you're just trying to get it out as quickly as you can. He Mm -hmm. does that from time to time. That's something you'd expect him to see do less of this year as he's much more ahead of plays with his mind. Mm -hmm. But that's sometimes why quarterbacks do it. Yeah, and I think maybe he's thinking, okay, like this this DB is close, so I'm going to try to put it low and maybe protect the ball from the defender, but yeah. he ends up just putting it in the dirt and yeah. making it almost more dangerous, if anything. So, yeah. Yeah. Head to the next one. So, new drive. We got first and 10, beginning of the second quarter. So, a few one of the few under center plays we'll see from this cut up. We got a play action throw. And here's this is another concept BC really likes this deep shot. I think this is Yankee. Correct me if I'm wrong, where you get the post with the deep crosser. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very much Yankee. We're we're seeing this. People call it post over. People call it Yankee. People call it Portland. Like we're seeing this. I can't tell you haven't watched all the NFL preseason stuff I've watched, Mitchell. How many times I've seen this play? Probably 700 times this preseason alone. It's like a staple NFL concept. Particularly, I was in the uh, SIS data challenge. And Coach Rick Neuheisel uh, was one of the judges, and he talked about this play. And they call it first and 10, you know, under center, run look. It's it's a great call because you get base defenses, single high, usually cover three coverage. What I love about this play, the climb, the eyes downfield, he knows he's going to get hit, but he still makes this throw. This yeah. was one of the more impressive plays he had in this game, in my mind, because of that factor. Yeah, that's what you talked about. Those first steps before where he, you know, yeah. dodges that defender, gets up and finds the the over route. So one other thing is you mentioned cover three. So Pitt, uh, Pat Nardi is the head coach at Pitt. You know, he's from that Mark D'Antonio press quarters tree. So, yeah. you know, I think we see, let's see, it's the, I guess the backside safety has to cover this deep over route. You know, what kind of throws are you expected to be like our best at attacking this kind of press quarters defense you're going to see? I mean, you know, anytime you get sort of press quarters, look, you're looking those sort of seam benders in the middle of the field to attack those two high safeties. Mm-hmm. You're thinking Turkey hole on the outside. Anytime you get those, those two high safety look with the press, the press corners on the outside, you're thinking hole shots. And you're also thinking of those over routes in front of them, yeah. you know, and, and sort of that first intense situation, you know, that's what they're sort of dialing up. They've got that 
sort of over route against that too high look. But then if they did spin this, and there are times when they spin to the single high in this game, there's a play coming up with that. Maybe you get a shot on that post route over the top. Yeah, and this is a pretty talented secondary. So I know that Jason Pinnock, the, uh, the corner at the bottom of the screen, he's, a, he's made this team for the Jets. Uh, both safeties were drafted. And then the other corner, Marquise Williams, he's still with the team, but he's a pretty good corner too. I think he made all ACC. So, you know, this is a good secondary and good defensive line too. Two draft picks, three yeah. draft, two draft picks as well. So we've got a screen here. And you, I think, I'm not really sure why, but BC really struggled in the screen game this past year. Um, yeah, I mean, this got blown up like yeah. pretty much from jump. So he did what he's supposed to do. He turfed it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm. If I'm great at this play, this is a ten out of ten. Like, <laughs> you, you turf it. Like, that's what you do. That's why I bring you on because, like you were saying, BC fans going to see this and oh, this is an F. Like it didn't work, but you know, get an expert set of eyes and it's, oh no, that's a smart play. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what happens if he tries to force that and it gets tipped? Oh yeah, and intercepted for like, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah, we'll see a another maybe a kind of a dumber play later in the game that we can talk about but so here we go we got empty but out of base personnel uh let's see we've got ben well uh, tight end plays good defensive back here yeah i mean <laughs> i understand why he made this read this is sort of you know kind of a levels ish concept of that backside corner so you get the the one and the the two are basically coming in the one and the three are coming in to the tight end. He's going to the corner. So you're trying to get the flow of the play away from it, mm -hmm. seeing if he can get something cheap. He likes the matchup. He just underthrows it. Yeah, this is and that. He sort of back foots it there. Yeah, this is the Marquise Williams. So you got your 6'5", 10, and a 5'9 corner. So again, matchup. Pick. But yeah, it doesn't really get all the mechanics into yeah. the throw um, yeah. from the bottom, from the uh, feet up. Yeah, and when you see the release point, you can see him sort of leading back, arched away from this throw. I mean, it's hard to throw fadeaway jumpers on Saturdays, let alone Sundays, mm -hmm. unless you're Aaron Rodgers or Patrick Mahomes. Right. Yeah. I think you just mostly got lucky there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got third and 10. So I believe it's the exact next play. Yep. So we'll see a two by two. This so play I love. This play okay. I absolutely love. They sort of, they show you that sort of press quarters, quarters look, see two eye look, but they sort of invert it to a single. Oh, high. yeah. Okay. See that? Yeah. I love that. He reads it perfectly and he knows they can't cover both those routes. Because mm -hmm. you've got the corner has to stick on the vertical. He's throwing that out on time in rhythm. That curl flat defender. Now he can't get out there fast enough. And you see the time in the rhythm. The ball's out in sync with the break. That's an NFL read and throw. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so we're going. We're going from the from one hash to the opposite numbers basically. Yeah. Uh, and you know, good catch, good placement. Uh, I think you've got a wide receiver and a linebacker there, but still, you know, like you said, finding the matchup, making a really nice throw. Uh, and, and on a crucial down distance. He's got to read that. You know, that's a little bit of a different rotation. It's not something you see all the time. Yeah. And that's got some good, that's some good velocity there too. Yeah. Like obviously the distance laterally, but you've got some good um, zip on that ball, which you like to see. So we've got another condensed bunch here. Love this one too. But this is the deep yep. shot to Zay. Yep. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that's a variation of Yankee, a variation of post over where they are. Right. So you, you get run the guy that. curl up mm -hmm. and you see that backside yeah. corner gets caught in a bind there. Because yep. sometimes what you see, the reason why you run variations of this, teams here again, they go to a single high. What team what defenses are doing, they'll they'll cut call that where the free safety is free to drive downhill on the shallow route, and that corner will then replace him in the middle of the field and pick up the post coming from the other side. Yeah. That corner sort of gets caught in a body. He's not sure what he's supposed to be doing. And then Zay runs a perfect sort of corner post, gets that post safety to open up his hips, and the ball's there. Like, ball's it's perfect, a Perfect yeah. read, perfect throw, great design, great route, great play call, like just fantastic all around. Mm -hmm. I think, again, as a Steelers fan, I think the Giants ran this concept to Darius Slayton in week one yeah. last year. Yeah. And I, I, I will say there was a writer for uh, Big Blue View that predicted they were going to run that concept against the Steelers. <laughs> I'm not saying who, it was me, but yeah, somebody <laughs> did do that. All right. Now we're good. Okay. All right. So after the touchdown, that's the 44 yarder. So we're back here. 
So I mean, this is the one run play that somehow got on here. I'm not really sure why, but it, it happens. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fantastic handoff, well executed. <laughs> I think handoff so. Mechanics. This is something that they they did. I think, like you mentioned with that QB power earlier, this is something they built in because they would run this split zone as a read option with the quarterback, which yeah. you know Jerkovich is six five two twenty six. So you know if you get him in space, I think they ran against Notre Dame had a big play. You know that's something that I am hoping they do a little bit more of this year, getting him using him as a running threat. So we've got the boot with the slide. There's another short arm. And I think yeah. this one's mostly just the pressure in his yeah. face. Yeah. I so. mean, I, I'm not going to worry about that play. You, most quarterbacks aren't making this play at this moment. I would say that defenders get paid too, but they don't. So, you know, well, but, now, now they will. <laughs> yeah. Now they yeah, will. That's true. That's now they will. <laughs> so, let's see. Oh, second and 10. Got gun. Two by two. This play image, so we've got a halfback, and this is David Bailey, who's kind of more of a power back. He kind of just runs the seam up the middle, and you've got, um, I think you've got the mirrored corner routes again. Yep. So, uh, sm yeah, I guess I mean, two smashes. Flat yeah. Mirrored flat seven smash with an A seam. Like, this is something I ran in college. You're trying to get him. You're trying to get against this too high look, him over the top of that linebacker. But if you can't, you put it to the outside away from the leverage. And so I love this throw. Yeah. I mean, I understand, like, Maybe in a perfect world, he's a hair quicker with this and does try to get it over the top. Mm -hmm. But if you can't, if you're not sure of it, then you got to put it to leverage. And yeah. that's what he does here. Yeah. yeah. And I'll say, I'll say like, you know, that's though well, that safety is coming over the top too. And David yeah. Bailey's not going to be out running many defenders in the yeah. open field. So definitely so, the right call yeah, there. It's a, it's a nice little leverage read. You can also see his eyes there too. He kind of holds the safeties a little bit. You see how he's kind of staring at the safety there trying to get him to hold in place and then flashes late. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's just really well done. Yeah. So you watch number 12 there. He kind of moves there and then he yeah. pivots, but too late. And then you get the nice, nice gain there. Yeah. David that's Bailey. what I like to call manipulation that matters. Like it's one thing when you're looking off a of free safety and then throwing an out route. Mm -hmm. It's another thing we're doing something like that. Yeah. So this one, this one is a uh, tough. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> I think it's a bust, and he's not expecting that guy to be that open. Yeah, and sometimes yeah, it got, happens. Yeah, because they got like they got five. I think the, the free safety comes late, but I think yeah, yeah. I mean they've got four plus one over three. Like they yeah. should have this covered up. Isaiah just and, drops this one. Yeah, I mean, he, could it have been a little bit of a better throw? Yeah, I mean maybe if he puts it more outside, because he kind of has to reach back here at the last second. But yeah. It's a catchable ball. I mean, yeah. And then you've got the trademark number thirty-two here with the em emphatic incomplete because it was right. all I did, all me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> love that from defensive back. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if we can get it. Yeah, it's a little behind him, but still, yeah, because he, I mean, he kind of he misexpects it because his hands come out late. Yeah. But still, like you hitch in the hands, catch the ball. Yeah. So we've got another bunch here. Motion out. Escapes the pocket. I think this is just, he just scrambles here. Yep. Yeah. And, and this one I'm okay with, you know, I mentioned earlier, like your first step should be forward. Well, interior pocket breaks down here. Yeah. If he goes and forward, he's going to get sacked. So, you know, he gets to the corner competitive, you know, competitive, competitively tough play here. Yeah. So I like this one. I think I think maybe he uh, might be a little gun shy of doing the throwing late over the middle because he's got if you look at near the goal line he's got eleven open yeah. he can fire that in there but he might be like yeah I'm not sure so I'll just tuck it run gets through a tackle and you know fights for some yards which is great to see yeah and this is where you see especially like the young the younger Big Ben when he was you know a little more spry and right. athletic you see that actually scrambling for yards a nice little pop from the safety there yep. too. We got first eight. First and goal, I guess it would be. Got three tight ends to the left. Little play action. Finds long. Solid little play. Yeah, nice little play. You know, like you got two, you got two, you got two uh, two routes here. So yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I'm okay with them not throwing that like sort of mm -hmm. throwback post here because yeah. that backside corner was poaching it. Oh yeah. Yeah, and under the previous administration, BC used to really like that Y throwback yeah. leak in the red zone, but 
didn't do that as much this year. So miss the crucial QB sneak here. Yeah. But competitive toughness, you know, yeah, they go. stymied and I think this is on fourth. So, you know, you've got to have it here. They did. Uh, I think there was at least one game where he scored like three rushing touchdowns just off sneaks or something. It was insane. And I was like, but hey, you know, you got to get the ball and it's fine. I'm holding up my notes for the camera. You can see on that play plus CT, which stands for plus competitive toughness. Exactly. So, there you go. Yeah. So let me see. What was the timing? OK, so we got two minutes, almost end of half, third down. Trying to get a drive going, get a score for the half. Nice little post route yep. there to Hunter Long. And he knows it's going to be there. You get pre-snap motion. Nobody moves. He knows it's zone. He knows it's going to be there. This little option route to the tight end. It's uh, rolled up by his lineman here a bit yeah. late, but smartly just kind of rolls with the contact. You know, Good to see that. Yeah. So we get the end zone angle here. First down, under two minutes, getting the drive going. Got some four verticals action pressure and bad, not not good. No. But at least gets the ball out. But I, th I think they actually did rule this a sack, if I remember correctly, from watching yeah. this game. So, you know, that's just a timing thing, but we'll see how the pressure got here. So let's see. So we've got pressure from the left and then, so then these are the yeah, two I mean, NFL defensive ends. So yeah. you're going to get that against these two. I yeah. Mean, so that was Weaver off the right tackle with the long arm. He yeah, gets Vrabel, the initial pressure. Rabel's kid gets, uh, gets whooped here. Yeah. <laughs> but that'll happen. So let's see, we got third and 14 time running down. Play action, another pressure again, and takes the sack. Yeah. So this is kind of well, especially in these kind of situations where the defense defense knows they're passing, and these guys can just pin their ears back yeah, and get out exactly. of the quarterback. Exactly. There's not much you can do here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they they give him extra protection, but just can't hold up. I mean, it does basically gets sacked by the running back. Though, yeah. So. Yeah. BC's running backs were not the greatest in pass pro last year. So hopefully that's something they worked on this off season. All right. So that's the first half. We're going to move into the third quarter here. And if I remember correctly, this is going to be a pretty nice play. Nope. Next one. So they run the power here again. He tries to make a man miss, but doesn't get any yards. Again, you're putting something on film. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because I don't think they ever really ran the jet to, to Flowers, who and Flowers runs a lot of jets, so right. they never really uh, kind of came back to that, I guess, because it didn't really work either time, but I think this will be the nice play. So we got, again, this this uh, condensed double wing formation, and we run Yankee again, yep. and Flowers just gets over <coughs> the top. Beautiful catch, beautiful throw. And this is where I wrote in my notes, Mitchell, just center of the Tennessee right now. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, this that's the offense I think oh, yeah. will operate extremely well in. But this is, look, you get man. No safeties over the top. Yep. Just get it, you know, put it out in front of your guy. Flowers has got that 4-3 speed. Make a play. Yeah, it's a fantastic read. Great throw, great route. Good all around. Yeah. So, Mark, what we see, like I've, I've mentioned a few times, we've seen this condensed formation a lot. What does a condensed formation do to a defense when they're trying to either read the offense or cover what the offense? Well, is I mean, doing? It, it it creates natural some natural rubs. It also shows run. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, you see that sort of condensed formation look like that with a double wing out of twelve personnel. That's two tight ends. You know, your expected run, even in this sort of, I believe it's a second and 12 situation, mm -hmm. you know, you see that come into the game. You know, have to think, look, they're trying to run the football. They're going to try to get this to like third and manageable. They're not going to do anything risky here. You get base defense, you get man coverage call here. Like it, it sets the defense up for a play like this because the defense is thinking run. They're in the mindset of run. It just allows you to get over the top on these play action designs. 
Yeah, and this is what a lot of people talk about with play action is that because BC's running game was not the best last year, but even just right. the threat of an average running game can make your play action game effective. You don't exactly. have to, you don't and, have and, to be Tennessee with Derrick Henry. And, and part of the like threat of play action is getting the defense to do a base for formation, base personnel. Mm-hmm. Then you're mm-hmm. throwing against four defensive backs, not five or six. Yep. So we got another screen here, which just gets blown up immediately. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so. this is this is a call in the huddle. This is predetermined. Like, yep. Nothing you can do. Yeah. Hopefully, BC can kind of get this screen game fixed this year because it was not ideal last year. So we've got gun. We've got a spread formation pretty much. Defense is showing pressure. Backs out of it. Kind of runs some loops. Fires a relatively ill-advised vertical. Yeah, I mean, this was another sort of fadeaway throw here. Like he has, like, I'm not worried about him from an arm strength perspective, mm-hmm. but it's not a pure cannon. And so when yeah. you try to th- make throws like this fade in a way, they might not get there on time. Yeah. I'm wondering if this was a, I'm kind of throwing it away, but giving my receiver yeah, it, the slightest it of chances. That. It might be that. It might be just like, I'm going to put this near him and maybe he makes a mar- miraculous play, but yeah. it doesn't quite get there. No, no. And like we said, we've got, some sim pressure here and got a lot of twists and stunts gets picked up decently. Well, yeah. um, Fender makes play. can't keep his feet in bounds. So we go to second and nine. This is the next drive. So we've got another kind of funky empty formation. They're going to motion the running back back in though. God. She tries another kind of deep post shot, but yeah. receiver gets interfered with a little bit, maybe, but still wildly overthrows it. And I think we've got a good amount of pressure here. Yeah, I mean, the the one thing mm-hmm. here is you might want to throw that out route off this sort of post out scissors look to the outside there, the tight end. But yeah, you no, know, I can understand why he took the shot. Yeah, so you got to think it's a second and nine, so you know maybe not you're in that kind of mid range area, so right. maybe. You know, maybe you can get that big chunk play to get you into the red zone or even dip big touchdown, but still a pretty decent overthrow. But, so we go to third and nine. Running this. I think this is that sale yeah. or that sale concept again, but he takes the sack here. Weaver gets in fir- inside first and then off and then uh, the tight end trips him, I think. Yeah. So, no, oh, so we haven't, so what, what can you talk about with like pocket management or I guess just how do you like avoid plays like these? <laughs> I mean, subtle, s- sort of subtle, small, quiet footwork, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, quieter, smaller, choppier, the better. Like here, it's almost like he's a bit wide with the base, a bit wide with everything. Yeah. And that's going to expose you to getting tripped up, to getting knocked around, to tripping over guys. Like, you know, it's it's easy to say, look, you want to be like Tom Brady in the pocket, but there's a reason Brady's still playing when he's my age. It's that yeah. sort of feel and quiet, quick, you know, small pocket nuanced movement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's got kind of those bigger strides, so he's probably just thinking, I just got to get out of the pocket as fast yeah. as possible without really yeah. thinking about that. So, you know, not the best play there. So next drive, we go back to an empty look at a base person now. not this is another one where yeah uh, the pressure really affects his mechanics here and just ability to follow i think yeah. he like he can't even really follow through with his like yeah, the yeah, yeah. The he, ground. he doesn't finish the release it's a high release he can't really finish it what i do like though he goes full field here he opens the stick to the left doesn't like it comes back to the ohio to the right with the, the go flat so he's making full field read here it's just the pressure gets to him and he can't really finish the throw that's a nice little route by Hunter Long. You know, you engage the defender a little bit, spin yeah. off him. You know, that's within five yards. Nobody's going to yep. call that. So, but can't get the ball there accurately. So, I'll pitch would have caught that. So, we can move on. Another bunch of the field. So, he gets that backside dig. I think, was this play in your uh, summer I scouting? Believe him? So, I think it was. It's something that I. I got highlighted here. I love this play. You get the out, the whip, the under on the left. Doesn't like it. Resets, throws this backside dig while getting drilled. Mm -hmm. Like, again, this is NFL stuff. Like, he can't step into this 
this has to be all arm, but he mm. still gets it there. I mean, again, and it's going one, two, three, four, basically, because I said, you know, out, whip, under from that bunch. Doesn't like any of it. Gets put the ground and yeah, nice, yeah. great throw. So we come back to this condensed or wing double wing formation with the boot action finds the tight end back across the middle. That's a good little move because the design of that play is to get out to the edges, right? You want to mm -hmm. get out. This is where you want to get outside the pocket here. He can't get there. So instead of trying to force the issue stops, pivots, flips the hips back, throws that little sort of under route from the backside tight end there. Mm -hmm. Well, guess. Yeah. That's it's little, like a little uh, under slam route. Whip yeah. route. Yeah. Okay. Slam. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where you block down and then sort of come out. back. Yeah. yeah. Now that's a nice little play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's something that the BC offense really added this past year, thanks to Frank Signetti. It's a lot of these NFL level concepts that really yes. weren't in the playbook for the last few years, you know, where the quarterback can actually, you know, give you some interesting reps to look at. So we got another boot action here. He's directing traffic a bit. Receiver drops the ball. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I like what he did here. Yeah. Like he was telling him exactly where to go, and he threw it exactly where he wanted them to be. The guy just doesn't make the play. Yeah. I don't know. I got a great receiving season. He's maybe not the best pass blocker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's he's okay, but not not the best. <laughs> he's not somebody you're asking to block pass all pro the all yeah, the time. Yeah. yeah. We got another 12 person now. Got so so what what are we what are we looking at with like a play like this where this is the I would say decision making where you yeah. know you kind of just get frozen and eventually the, the play clock I, up with you. I, I go between you know great in this a good no throw or a bad decision because you know if you, you watch this. He has the out route to the tight end. It's kind of there, but it has to be an immediate decision. Like he's like got to throw right. it like now. Yep. Yeah. And, and he's so got he's still got to get it. He's got to fit it between basically three defenders. Yeah. And, like and so that's why I kind of lean here, even mm -hmm. though it's a sack. Yeah. It's an okay no throw. And like, I think he he wanted Zay doing something up top. Yeah. Um, but again, pulls it and then you know just eats it basically. Yeah. And there are going to be times when you just have to live yep. with the decision you made and eat it, and that's what he does here. He doesn't mm -hmm. compound the problem by trying something risky late. Mm -hmm. So here we see, again, the what you talked about is your first steps are forward, so he gets yep. up and out of the Miles, pocket, okay, but and just he's got to throw when he's in the yep. air. So yep. you know, not everybody's Patrick Mahomes, Josh nope. Allen. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, play in the pretty in the mid red zone here. I think after a turnover, if I remember correctly, he tries to float one into Hunter Long and Hunter Long can't get. But I, th I think this is a really nice throw because he yeah, shows this is you where get, you want to go with it. This is yeah. exactly where you want to go with it. Got that nice and you know. So some quarterbacks they might you know try to fit this in with like a yeah. bullet there, but I really like how he kind of puts some air under it, gives it a little bit of time. And if Hunter Long can make that catch, he just yeah. doesn't. But that's yeah. a nice throw. Yeah, I like this throw because you've got, you know, backside safety's kind of lurking. Um, let your guy go get it. You know, this is the look you want. It's sort of a pre-snap too high look. Let him go get it. Mm-hmm. Let me see if his eyes and his eyes don't really tell us much. Kind of just looks at the middle field and yeah. finds long wait. <laughs> love to but love defensive yep. backs. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. If I remember correctly, this is a bit of a bad play. <laughs> yep. So this this is mostly just Rashad Weaver making a really nice play to yeah. beat. Tyler Vrabel comes back inside and literally just steals just takes the ball steals away. it from him. Yeah. So right. and it's not a situation where like his hands are pretty much looks to me like they're really both on the ball. Like, yeah. it's not like he's waving it around being reckless with no. his ball carriage. It's just a really good play. Yeah. It's kind of get surprised with when somebody else shows up in your you know personal space. Right. Yeah. Yep, there he is. <laughs> 
So, all right. So next drive, got in the short area. Get the run the from the jet handoff. <laughs> good hand, good handoff. Great handoff. <laughs> got that Joe Flacco, Peyton Manning handoff. Yeah. <laughs> so I. What do so be? I mentioned earlier that Zay Flowers runs a lot of jet sweeps. What does a jet sweep mean for the offense when it's necessary, more so when it's a fake? And like, what does that open up for the offense later in the game? I mean, it's it, anything. There are two basic things for motion motion for information, the pre snap motion where you get a man versus zone cue. Then there's motion of the snap, motion for impact because you're forcing the defense to adjust right at the snap when you're using that jet motion. And you really sort of set it up. The, the best way to sort of frame it is if you think back to 2018, all the stuff that the Rams are doing with jet motion, throwing that guy to the flat, you know, they would never throw to him, mm -hmm. but you would force the defense to cover it. Eventually when teams figured out Sean McVay, Jared Goff, that offense, they started ignoring it. Mm-hmm. But then they started throwing to it a couple years later. Like they started last year throwing to that guy on jet motion. And so you're really sort of trying to make the defense think right at the snap, make them adjust right at the snap, and potentially set up once they start ignoring that guy, then you start coming to him on jets, on you know, jet to the flat, jet flat go, like all the stuff you could do off of that. Right. So that's something BC might be looking yeah. for this year. But okay, so this is we got a really this nice is an throw. NFL here. throw. Yep out anticipation puts it on the money like this is an nfl throw Just clean pocket beautiful yeah. throw great placement again from about the middle of the field to the sideline good timing good all that three-step gun drop hit and throw balls out on time in rhythm and i Get like little... sort of like cheat step first with the left Get yourself a bit more depth. That's I always like when quarterbacks do that. Mm -hmm. So you got the motion to create a four by one and go with a QB draw, possibly a dump back, fake dump to the running back. <laughs> yeah. This is an interesting play. I don't think they really came back to this one either. No. <laughs> Especially and, when, and, when the linebacker just puts his shoulder right into the quarterback's face. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you want to tie that one up anytime soon. No. No. He's he's big, but he's he's not uh not early era Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah. This is why people don't want your quarterback running. <laughs> right. So in this play, we see kind of that return motion you mentioned. So yep. this is more so just to kind of get a read for on the information. Defense. Yeah, okay. you see sort of nobody trailing there, and then you get what you expected: zone coverage. Yeah, and they run. They, so they they fake the bubble to the top, and then they want the running backs being underneath. Yep. But the defensive lineman just reads it perfectly. Yep. He gets the ball to him. It's caught. It's caught, but tackle for a loss. So yep. maybe that's one you can t <laughs> try to turf if you can. But he's still got pressure in his face. Right. So you know. Impressive in that he's able to get it to running back, but not necessarily yeah. a replicable play. <laughs> yeah, that defense tackle just read that the whole time. Mm -hmm. So we got third and 15. Yeah. <laughs> no. I think you got to panic here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then, you know, these redshirt software that might happen occasionally. Yeah. So uh, let me see what kind of concept. So we've got verticals on the outside. Basically, verts. I mean, yeah. <sighs> this one's tough. Like, it, one's you're, tough. You're, you're asking your quarterback to do a lot here with not yeah. with, like you're asking him to do a lot, but not, you're not giving him much to work with. You've just got to, yeah. especially because I think so def defense goes some kind of, it looks like probably quarters because you got the safeties yeah. over the top. Yeah. And then they've got the trying to get the slot on the dig, but he doesn't yeah. get open. So just play that just you know didn't work this time it did not work and protection was decent but you know just then like you said i think he definitely just panicked here and that that that, ha that did happen a, a good few times last year so but in your first year starting you know that that might tend to that happen. will happen oh, wait, let me see we got third and nine it's probably the next drive and then motions to the slot and can't get to him i mean the time in is good. The anticipation is good. You just need to place it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's been a lot, there's a lot of talk about like how, like you said, like accuracy and placement is so important, but how do you like necessarily improve that? Because it's obviously not like a just physical trait, like athletic ability or maybe arm strength, but you know, how do I you mean, improve that? There, there's also 
it can also happen with the mind, you know, okay. with, you know, understand the route concepts, understanding where the weaknesses and coverages are, understanding what coverage you're getting in to begin with. Uh, that will make it easier because all of that feeds into the game slowing down for the quarterback. And when the game really sort of slows down for you, you can make throws with time and in with rhythm and really sort of take advantage of the space that gets created by concepts. I mean, here, this is an anticipation throw and the coverage is generally good, but because he anticipates it, like there's, you're able to have at least that little bit of separation that's extended through the break into the actual out route. And yeah, so and this- then the next step is, okay, now put the football, you know exactly where you need to be with it. Now let's clean the mechanics up perfectly and you can put it all together. Yeah, because I was thinking this seems like a mechanically clean throw, but he yeah. just doesn't get it there. Uh, yeah, the um, mechanics, and he's generally pretty clean mechanically. Like, I don't think it's a situation where he's missing throws because of mechanics. There might be times when his release point is a bit mm-hmm. erratic. Like, sometimes it's higher than others. Mm-hmm. I think he does need to have a more consistent release point. That is like the one mechanical area I would identify with him that I'd like to see him sort of work on. And that's something that probably comes with just practicing and yep. reps and just yep. playing more. Okay. That's good to know. So we got a nice, this is kind of, I think this is that seam bender you mentioned yep. where, you know, you get that in between the linebacker and the safety hunter yep. long takes a little lick, but that's a nice big gain. I mean, too high. You got to, th- that's the route you have to throw. Mm-hmm. Get that safety to wide in just a bit and yeah. put it on them. Mm-hmm. So we got second and four. Uh, this is so we're run, we're uh, we're in crunch time now. Tie yeah. game. Got pressure. Gets around it. Able to scramble. Gets ahead for almost the first down. And he gets out of bounds. And yep, yep, it's critical at this mm-hmm. point because you're mm-hmm. playing with seconds. Mm-hmm. Somehow I'm not sure why, but he gets the out route to long. Nice placement. Stays yep. in bounds, but you got the first down, so clock yep, will so stop clock will temporarily. Stop. Yep. They they like to do this a lot in these late game uh got to save time situations, yep. find long near the sideline. Did this a and lot again, like, against Texas the, State. The anticipation on that, you know, balls out before the break. You see it here. Yeah, you can see. The ball's coming out. Mm-hmm. He turns, balls in the air. Mm-hmm. Like Gets That's it away from both want. defenders. Yep. Yeah. So now we're down to 11 seconds, second and 10. Getting the field goal range. I think he might have thought yeah. he, got, he got an interference call here. And the receiver kind of gives up on the route. If that, if that receiver get, keeps if going, keeps that's going, that might be six. Yeah, that, that's, a, that, that's game over, baby. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> maybe receiver can't find it or something or yeah. just thinks he got the flag or I don't know what's going on. But, yeah, that could have been a touchdown too. So probably the last play of the game before we go to overtime. Tries to find a sideline throw. Again, another one of those where it's uh, maybe my, I'll try to get my guy a shot, but I'm prioritizing yeah. an incompletion, honestly. Yeah. You know, you they're, they're trying seconds. to get like something yeah. to maybe get a yeah, you've got Yeah, you've got five seconds, so it's got to be there. Yeah. It's got to be all or nothing. Even he's he still hitches up a bit here. Like, yeah. let's get that out because he oh actually he does get it out. I thought he clutched before, but never mind. So incompletion. I believe BC missed the field goal. So we go to overtime. I think BC gets the ball first. So they run that jet. They run that boot action and just yep. short arms it because of pressure. Yep. I, I don't know if you got a tip there. My defense might have got a tip. Yeah, a tip. I mean, either see. way, pressure influences mm-hmm. this. Yeah. Nah, can't, can't tell, but still, you're right. The important thing's the pressure. Yeah. All right, so we got second and 10. Got a bunch to the, bunch to the low side again. See motion, nobody trails. So again, mm-hmm. he's expecting zone. Tries the let's see yeah. what just tries the vertical there. Nothing doing. A little yeah. overthrown, but yeah. 
that might be one where you're again you're trying to attack get, get the receivers to use his height as an advantage right. but not a lot going on i think that that this one seems like a good example for that release point that yeah. high release point is that something that i'm seeing i seeing that right no, you're seeing that right. You see how okay. it's it's higher there than it was on some of the throws we looked at earlier. And so, again, I mean, even that, that play where we talked about mechanics, that out route to Lawn that he kind of missed, even though it was in an anticipation throw, you're seeing that inconsistency with the release point. Sometimes it's higher than others. And so whether mm -hmm. it's high all the time or low all the time, I generally don't care, mm -hmm. but I want it to be one or the other all the time. Right, yeah. Unless it's a situation where you have to drop or move the arm slot because of pressure or something, but from clean pockets, like consistent arm and release point. So we go from empty backfield. We got the bunch to the right. Got a mesh post wheel, I think, and he finds the post for a touchdown. Yeah. I mean, that's a clutch throw. Yeah, he splits he climbs uh, the pocket. Like nice catch. That's a clutch play. Good climb. So, we, so, so we've got so we've got the the X receiver and the Z receiver running a mesh, and then we've got yep. a post wheel concept with the yep. other receivers. And he's got that post right in the middle. I of the mean, field. generally, when you get that mesh with the post over the top of it, you do see that sort of double high look. You know, that's where you want to go. But you got to be kind of sure of it, particularly in this moment. But he's sure of it. Yeah. And then, uh, so next drive, Pitt misses an extra point to lose in overtime. So that gets us out of that. Um, what's that? All right, so we're back here. Um, so, Mark, at the beginning of the stream, we talked about ball placement accuracy, decision-making competitive toughness. So based on that film, how would you grade fill out in that game? I mean, ball placements, you know, it, it's probably like a six or a seven. Like, mm -hmm. like there are some throws that were good. The AC where he had the leverage throw. There were some other throws we saw, even that last touchdown of the post route where the ball place was good. But there are some other areas that we talked about, and some of it might be mechanical, like we, we talked about, the sort of release point, the difference between the high release point, low re release point. Again, I don't care if it's here all the time or here all the time. I just want it one or the other all the time. Um, competitive toughness, I think, I think, you know, there are a couple of panicky moments, but it's like an eight, eight out of ten. I mean, you had the quarterback sneak. You had some – place where he knew he was going to take the shot the post over we talked about earlier where he got drilled knew it anytime you make a game winning throw in, in overtime that's a big thing for me yeah there were some panicky moments so that was pretty solid the decision making i think generally was solid i'd probably say seven seven to eight out of ten um there were those panicky moments but i think for the most part he read the field well. He understood coverage as well. He understood their weakness as well. Understood concepts well in terms of this is where I need to go now or this is where I need to go now based on coverage. Anytime you see a quarterback sort of read that too high into a weird inverted three, that mm -hmm. play we talked about in the first half, that was one of my favorite plays of his from his entire game film last year. That's a big moment for me. So on the three things we talked about, like all above average to well above average grades for this game. Now it's just one game. But this was the game, Mitchell, when I was watching him, when I got back in the group chats, I got out in my DMs, and I said, man, there's something here with this kid. Mm -hmm. You know, that there's a reason why, quote, unquote, draft Twitter is talking about this kid among many of the other quarterbacks as somebody that, look, we all know what we're looking for. We're all looking for the next Mitchell Trubisky, the next Joe Burrow, the next Zach Wilson, the next guy that's going to rise, right? Mm -hmm. We know the names of the top, Spencer Rattler, Sam Howell, like Malik Willis. We want to find the next guy that rises up boards, and there's reasons why people are excited about Phil, and it's for some of the stuff we talked about, some of the plays we highlighted. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think I, I have a sense of what you'll say, but so – for this season, you know, there's like you said, like he's getting a lot of talk as a draft prospect. He's still got could have an extra year. But if there's something that he like he one thing you want to isolate for him to work on this season and improve, or are you thinking like decision making or accuracy I mean, or just it, mechanics? It, for me, it's always decision making first. Like mm -hmm. if the coach and my coaches couldn't trust me not to make mistakes, which is why I was a backup. <laughs> if you can't trust your quarterback to not make mistakes, like you're not going to put him on the field. So you're always going to be improving decision-making. But there is that sort of accuracy ball placement thing. And I, I do think there is a partial mechanical issue here as well as sort of speeding things up in the mind. Sort that stuff out. And, yeah, he could be the guy that rises. Okay. Well, that's, that's awesome. Th again, thank you so much for doing this with us. Um, Mark, where can people find your work? 
Well, look, thanks for having me. This was a blast. I always love doing yeah. this stuff. I always love chopping up plays. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Mark Schofield. Uh, you mentioned USA Today Touchdown Wire, uh, QB Factory with the, the brilliant Ray Shell Prevent, uh, Bleeding Green Radio, Bleeding Green Nation, uh, Big Blue View, where I write about offense and quarterbacks uh, for SB Nation, uh, Pat's Pulpit, where I have the Sco Show, which is a Patriots based centered podcast. I'm going to do some video breakdowns of Dak Prescott over at Blog and the Boy. So it'll be a busy fall, but the easiest way to find me is on Twitter at Mark Schofield. Absolutely. Extremely busy, man. So we, we thank him again for making the time and, you know, follow him on YouTube as well. He's doing these for a bunch of quarterbacks, giving us a lot of great information about scouting players. So thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and go Eags.